I have two scriptures for us today. I'm keeping it really, really simple. And this is what I want you to take away. In Psalm 4610, we know that it says, be still and know that I am God. Be still means cease striving. I don't know if you've carried luggage through the airport. I know everything has wheels on it now, right? But there was a time that our, our luggage really didn't have wheels and we had to carry it. And as long as we were moving, we knew that it was heavy, but, but we could see the end in sight. We could see the gate coming or we could see the exit through security. And so we knew we just had to go a little bit farther. But imagine standing still and holding all of those bags, not putting one down. Imagine how heavy that would be. Imagine the burden. Imagine the ache in your shoulders. Imagine your hands cramping up by standing still. Friends, in order to be still, as we are told in Psalm 4610, we have to release. <laughs> we have to set that baggage. We have to set those burdens at the Lord's feet in order to truly be still and hear him and know. We've got to set down our doubts and our fears. We've got to set down our dreams and plans for what his greatest plan is. We've got to release our good for his best. We've got to release our definitions of success and, and what we've been taught and trained by the world that success should look like. We've got to release that in order to be still and know and let him lead us. We've got to release our definitions of who we are with relationship to our achievements and let him define us, right? The second scripture I have for you is Job 12, 10. And it says this, in his hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. If the Lord created you, knows the number of hairs on your head, knit you together in your mother's womb. Do you not think that he can control everything better than you? Do you not think that he already knows the audience you are to serve? Do you not think that he has already lined them up? And do you not think that he already sees the obstacles that you will face in your business as you walk out the assignment he's given you and your mission in the marketplace? But see, when we're holding on to our way, so tightly, we leave no room for him to move. And guess what else? When we're holding on to our way so tightly, who gets the glory when it all works out? We take that for ourselves. There are three things that I often say to my clients because I've heard them over and over. If he brings you to it, he'll bring you through it. Where God guides, he provides. And if he gives permission, he will give provision. There is so much noise about what success should look like and feel like and what how, how you should show up to the world as successful. Sometimes that's materially, right? Sometimes that's in an arrogance of how you show up, which is different than confidence, isn't it? But the world has so many definitions that are constantly shifting. Do you want to continue to hold on to that? Or do you want to release and let God define and direct you and then pick up discipline instead of inconsistency to walk out what he's directed you to do? Because when you do that, when you release in that closed loop that we talk about as the four keys to redefine hustle, guess what happens? Development. Development where he may shift you to serving a different audience. He may call you to niche further down, and that, that seems unnerving. He may direct you to a new service. He may call you to engage a business coach, a Christian business coach like me. He may call you to launch something new. But how can you allow that to happen if you're not willing to release the worry over how it will happen or the doubt or the fears 